this is how you preserve the whole text, Samhita, mantras, all of them. Then, it was sung also, and that singing was called Saman, Samaveda, singing in right up to seven kinds of notes, not just three notes. One day I'll uh, bring my laptop and I'll play some Samagan for you because it's something which is done not by a single person, several people together. You will then see the difference, right? And then there was a slightly different kind of re recitation which was called the Yajurved. And with that, there were movements of the priests of going around. So, they said that the idea that the text needs to be preserved in a play, in a Natya, in a Natak, uh, Prakaran, etc., the text, the basic text for a play should be there. So when you do an Ashtapadi, Keshi Mathana Mudaram, Ramayamaya Saha Madana Manoratha Bhavitaya Savikaram. Now this is the basic text of Jayadev. But then you do an Angik movement. Just as the Vedic priest was going around the fire, or taking the yajman into different movements. There was this bodily movement, angik movement. That angik movement of the Veda becomes a basis for the angik movement in a play. So vachik, Sat, uh, vach, angik, vachik, sattvik and aharya. There are four kinds of abhinayas. And it is said here that jagraha patyam rigveda. The text is taken from the rigvedic tradition because in the rigvedic tradition you only preserve the mantra through eight kinds of Vikrita Pathas or eight kinds of variations, you preserve the text so that nothing is lost. Not a single anuswar or a single syllable or a single uh, vyanjan is lost. So you preserve the Pathya. And this tendency to preserve the Pathya of the text and to then do other things with it, this was taken by the art form of Natya from the tradition of Rig Veda. So, faithfulness to the text, that I shall keep the text as I have inherited. Or maybe I'll add something to it, but with a certain kind of a recognition. You are not going to change Jayadev, Keshi Mathana Mudaram, you are not going to change the words there. So that is the part here. This was taken from Rig Veda, then Angik is taken from the Yajur and then Gaan. In music, you cannot have three tones. Impossible to have three tones only. Music becomes very boring. Music then becomes not music, but Vedic recitation. There was a very clear distinction till very recently between recitation of Vedas and Laukik or informal singing. 
Mantras were never sung. Now, of course, in 25 years, horrible things are happening. You can hear Gayatri being sung in all kinds of ragas, you know. I, somebody asked me to assist him, a very famous musician 25 years ago, in setting the mantras of Veda to music, to Hindustani music. And I said, sorry, I simply cannot do it. And it is forbidden. He said, you are an old time pandit sort of a fellow. I said, look, this is simple common sense. We have preserved, reserved this kind of a recitation for this art form. And we are creating another variety for another purpose. So that when you listen to this kind of a chant, then you hear your mind goes only to Vedic recitation. You don't do it when you are doing a film song. But now we have kind of simply forgotten the reason and we are trying all kinds of experiments, what we call experiments, indiscriminate use and mixing of genres and contrasting them one with another, you know, like uh, do rag hindolam on, in Karnataka and do malkons in Hindustani, put the two musicians on the stage, ask one to sing a, a Karnataka uh, Kriti of uh, Tyagaraja in Hindolam or some such raga and do the same raga in Hindustani. Now, this is something which the ancients never felt a need for and I don't think the enlightened feel that need even today. Uh, but experimentation has its own life, its own logic and let us for a while be patient and let these things pass. Coming back to the derivation. Now what is being done in Natyashastra is that the constant connection is being made of Natya with the Vedic ritual. It is not just to glorify it. It's part of a historical development of an art form. When there was a particular kind of singing in Samagan, then that was applied to musicality later on. Certain things were added. So from three notes you make seven notes. Then in the seven notes you add alankaras. Then you use tanas, then you use gamakas, then you use various other things and you have what is called classical music or sangeet. And the ancient term for that was Gandharva. So this is how music as a form developed and this was employed in Natya. This is how Angi Kabhine was developed from the earlier simpler forms which were available in the Vedic rituals, the complicated, uh, the complicated methods of performance, the complicated art forms develop into Natya. Now, some more questions? Yeah. How did Zamrita came out of the rituals? What is the connection between Zamrita part and Vedic uh, rituals? Uh, and you will find references to them and names later on. Yes. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Natya Shastra very region specific, particularly to India. Is there any other places outside India that we can find relevance? Okay, any place where there is a relevance of Natya Shastra. 
I will talk about this later on uh, in later lectures on what I may call the impact of Natya Shastra in the European world from 1930s onwards. Uh, we'll talk about that, you know, how Indonesian dance was seen by Anton and Arto and then all that, yeah. Yes? So, what is the contribution of Atharva Veda to the, to the Natya Shastra? Yeah, louder. <coughs> No, louder, louder. What is the contribution of Atharva Veda in the Natya Shastra? Atharva Veda. Well, it is said here that Atharva Veda provides the rasa. Now, it's a highly esoteric reference. The Atharva Veda is considered to be a repository of earlier uh, science of medicine. And it became later on a basis for later medicine, uh, charak, etc., Ayurvedic medicine or Ayurved, etc. So, rasa here is used more in the metaphoric sense rather than in the practical sense. Because what is rasa? Rasa is the final outcome. Just as any kind of opachar, any kind of treatment brings health, rejuvenation, a higher mental state, a, bal a removal of tridoshas and a restoration of, a restoration of the normal health or swasthya, being yourself. Similarly, Rasa brings about this change of consciousness. Rasanubhuti creates that change. Because eventually all you want to know, all you want to see, all you want to experience in an art form is a rasa. If there is no rasa, nothing is meaningful. Nahi rasadrite kashchid arthaha pravartate. They'll talk about this later. So it is in this sense that the Atharva Veda is referred to. I'm glad you ask because I had skipped it over. It's not a question. It's, it's just a thought. Uh, you said like Nandi and Tandu were like, you know, different... Uh, Names of different Acharyas. Yeah, and yes. they followed the tradition and they had their own way. Did the Vedas come about like that? Like the Did the Vedas? Yeah, like the four divisions, I mean. Whether different schools... Okay, how did, the, the, yeah. how did the Vedas get divided into four? Ah, that is a question which I am not very competent to answer because that requires an entirely different kind of expertise. We are talking of the four Vedas much before uh, the Natya. But what I could say that basically as I ex tried to explain to you, it is a matter of viniyog or utility that Rig Veda was largely for the sake of preservation of the text. So, I am sure this is followed in your uh, dance uh, tradition also, that unless you memorize, understand and totally take within yourself the text which you are going to perform, if there is a text, I mean, I'm not talking of ultra-modern uh, performances without text, even in Bharatanatya. I'm talking of a traditional, let's say, an Ashtapadi. So, unless yahi madhava yahi kesha ma kuru kaitava vadam, unless you learn this, 
एंड अल्लेस यू अंडरस्टैंड या ही माधव या ही केशव माँ गुरु कैतव वादम अल्लेस यू अंडरस्टैंड एवरी पॉसिबल मीनिंग ऑफ एवरी वर्ड एंड इट बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ योर सोल यू कैन नॉट टू आंगे का भिन है एम आई रॉन्ग सिमिलरली द टेक्स्ट is taken in the tradition in the technology of preservation which was used for the rigveda i described the technology to you the eight kind of vikrutis and how you see these are these were very practical things it's not just a glorification because that technology was used to preserve the text that is one way then the other use is using the mantras to make the movement in the yagya and the other the, the sam gaan is to sing so by using the mantra in four different ways for four different purposes you create four kinds of vedas you know that the mantras are mostly the same atharva ved has different mantras but most of the mantras in rig yajur and sam are more or less the same they are rendered differently uh, but let's not go too much into it because then we go away from natya <laughs> the essential thing is to understand the connection the connection is first of all it brings an knowledge that it is expansive that it brings the it's not exclusivity of knowledge of veda is through the a vehicle of natya expanded to others number 1 number 2 as i described to you that various technical methods used in the vedic tradition are transformed to create different aspects of the performance as i explained this is the most essential thing to understand the connection of the vedic tradition with natya and then as i said in a response to her question that later on when we study some parts then we will see the exact songs the exact uh, rovinda ko lopyak all these things which were sung in the earlier vedic period we were employed in the earlier purpose of uh, in the earlier uh, natya or the earlier theater and also the most major distinction that mantras were never sung in the laukik or the worldly music this kind of a jumbling up has just occurred in 20 years they were kept different for the very simple reason not for any exclusivity so that there is a entirely different effect you don't use that effect for let us say a shringar purpose or some other you have so many kinds of music you do that and that was the classical music called gandharva or sangeet yeah is that right uh, just to summarize that particular thought uh, of saying rig yajur sama and atharva being absorbed into natya like we have taken part in from the and uh, the gestures from yajur again and the uh, music from sama is it uh, as an assumption just to crack the kind of a that the tradition of preserving pata is from rig is it right is it that's way we are asked to understand it yes the but the tradition of preserving the pata is from rig and the tradition of uh, uh, enacting for the pata is from yajur yeah. the tradition of singing for the same pata is from sama and the tradition of extracting rasa is from atharva yeah. uh, we say we only speak about the essence of the vedic application but not the actual veda am i right yes you see the vedic practice is for a different purpose yeah. for lakshya lakshya it is it is for pleasing the gods for asking things for whatever are the different uh aims of a vedic sacrifice yajya they are different natya we have defined that it is in order to entertain it is in order to bring a sense of responsibility among the people to transmit knowledge among the people and to elevate their minds this is the purpose of natya now you are taking technologies 
from the four, from the from Vedas. the earlier performance Tradition. like you use theater, theater was used to create film art form and film was used to create computer uh, uh, art form and animation and so and so forth 